anytime I see people talking about preservatives or they're asking, do you use natural preservatives? Uh, I tried that. Didn't go too well. You know, I've always been fascinated by the, the forensic science shows on TV, and I was told that those shows really don't um, share the experience that a real forensic science actually experiences at their normal workplace. Elaine is a forensic scientist. She has been for years. I'm going to have her tell you a little bit more about her process and how she became a forensic scientist and also her process and how she started her own line of natural hair care products. I am Elaine Harris and I got my STEM degree, one of the most sought after degrees that everybody talks about in uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So my degree is in biology, but then I also had a minor in chemistry and it was the minor in chemistry that I had that actually allowed me to work at the Illinois State Police Crime Lab um, here in Chicago. So I did that for 10 years and <clears throat> it kind of got a little bit boring to me. So I was, I was fascinated with the chemistry aspect of it, but it was very redundant. So I'm the type of person who I like to learn new things and I like new challenges. So I kind of started getting in trouble at work <laughs> and, uh, which resulted in a, uh, two week suspension. Um, it, it was a couple of other things going on at the workplace that I don't even want to mention, especially being an African-American female in a high pan position like that. You get picked on, you get uh, bullied and other things. It's, it's very political. So it's a great job, but it's a very political uh, job, especially for you know, African-Americans because they probably don't want us there anyway. But we were there they have to hire some of us anyway so i got suspended for two weeks and i was like oh my god i have been working since i was 17 years old with no gaps in my employment and now i have two weeks off of work what am i going to do so it just so happened that during that time my mother was also battling cancer and um, i started researching some of the ingredients and everything and you know i found out that she you know it is certain toxins that are in the in the uh, ingredients that we have in our deodorants and our face wash and basically everything that we're putting on our bodies and not to mention in our bodies with the food and all of the preservatives and everything that they have to treat the food with so i said you know what well, let me try and see if i can make a batch of whipped body butter without any of all of those carcinogens in them and of course carcinogens are cancer causing ingredients and so i successfully was able to make my first batch of whipped body butter and i specifically remember when i made my first batch you know i whipped it and then I sat it on my uh, countertop in the bathroom and it got hard over the, oh, it was it was soft when I whipped it and then it hardened up on me. So even that was trial and error of finding out just the right ingredients and oil to butter mixture to where, you know, after I whip it, it still, stay nice, it still stays nice and fluffy. So that's pretty much what got me into it. It was my two week suspension from my job as well as you know my mother going through what she was going through and i just said you know what maybe i can use this as an avenue to do something different all together so that's actually what wound up happening so as a chemistry lane i know that hairstylists we take chemistry in cosmetology school so we study chemistry and we know a lot about different products different ingredients but not to the level of a chemist or a, a someone like you that works in a crime lab 
So what is your process and how did you go about figuring out exactly what, I know you probably use a lot of natural hair products. Yes. And we're always looking at the ingredients because I know a lot of hairstylists and a lot of women consumers also have like a bathroom full of about 10 different brands of products that they use on their natural hair. So what was your process and how did you go about figuring out exactly what products that you, you wanted to add to your, your natural hair care products? That's actually a really great question. And the way I got started with making my own hair products, I kind of knew what to do for the body products uh, or for like the whip shea butter. That's kind of like easy because it's, you know, as long as you're putting some type of sealant over your skin while it's still halfway damp, it's gonna lock in moisture. But the hair is a little bit different because you have to, you know, you're dealing with different porosity levels and um, different textures of hair. So that can be a little bit trickier. And as we know, some ingredients will work for some textures of hair, while other ingredients may not work for um, other textures of hair. So one of the things that I started doing is I started reading the ingredients on the back of my favorite hair products. And then not only, I didn't stop there with just reading them, um, I would look up each ingredient one by one and I would write down what, what the function of was it in there. And I noticed that, um, first of all, a lot of the store brought products, they're gonna contain water, they're gonna contain glycerin, they're gonna contain some type of preservative system, and they're gonna contain some type of uh, emulsifier, which is gonna keep the oil phase from separating from the water phase. So those are your four basic ingredients that you're gonna have in almost all hair products across the board. So that was the first thing. And then the second thing was eliminating the ingredients that I knew was not good for you know to be absorbed in through the scalp or to just be put in on your body so i started saying well you know polysorbate 60 i believe that's a known carcinogen and it's in a lot of uh it's in a lot of uh products anything some people will argue that anything that's start has the prefix of pig i know you, with you being in a salon you've seen ingredients that starts with like pig eight or PEG-16, that's polyethylene glycol. Those, um, some people are argue that those can be carcinogens as well. Or, you know, anything that has like, um, ends in paraben, like a methylparaben, a polyparaben. Some people are leery about parabens, which is a preservative system. So I just started learning about preservatives. I started learning about um, emulsifiers. Uh, which emulsifiers were more vegetable based, which is uh, or versus which ones were more synthetic. So I really just started to educate myself on what's actually needed to go into these products. And I remember when I first started making my products, I was using um, an emulsifier that I found out later on was a carcinogen. And I was like, oh my God, I can't use this anymore. Like I can't sell this product to people knowing that they're putting it on their kids or like a five-year-old and knowing that it's a carcinogen so i i had to go on a hunt and find a different emulsifier that actually would hold the product together so that it wouldn't separate you know by the time it gets to the customer so all of this was like trial and error and then i remember one time um, when I was working with preservative systems and I wanted to be like 100% natural preservative. And so I used an oxidizer, which is something like grapefruit extract or like, you know, vitamin E oil or rosemary oil. These are those nature, they, they slow down the oxidation process of the oils that are in the products, but they don't preserve them. And, you know, I was, I just put a little bit extra in there, hoping that I didn't have to use like a commercial grade preservative that people would feel, you know, uncomfortable with using. But then you have to weigh the pros and cons of it. And okay, do you want to put uh, something in such a small concentration on your skin? Or do you want to just roll, rub a whole colony of bacteria in your hair and on your body? So it's, it's really kind of like, which one do you want to do? 
So I do put preservatives in my products now, but anybody that knows preservatives, if I make a one pound jar, which is 16 ounces, the amount of preservative that goes into a 16 ounce jar is less than an ounce. So most of the preservatives that people use, they use in a concentration of, of 0.5% to 1% of the entire ingredients list. So it's, it's in a really small amount but it doesn't take much to preserve the whole container. And I think that's actually a plus to the preservatives that we, that I work with. And then also that, you know, some of the more commercial grade using their products as well. So that was basically the process that I used in order to formulate my own products. That was awesome, Miss Elaine. You gave a lot of great information and like I'm sitting here thinking about the products that I use for my clients now. I need to go back and really, you know, I know, you know, the basic pro the I'm sorry, the basic ingredients that are in most of the products that I use, but I need to go more into detail and find out if I'm using products that have percentages in them. Well, not just for the safety of my clients, but the safety of me as well. I can actually send you a website that I use that you can actually type in the ingredient name and it'll give you the rating based off um, alert. It's the ingredients ability to be an irritant to the skin, be, be a carcinogen, or if it's good for use around the mouth or the eye area, like it tells you all of that stuff. It has really been a game changer for knowing what to put in there or, or knowing which products I can use it in. So like my preservative system that I use is a phenoxy ethanol. So you, you, you'll probably see that like on your shampoo or like some of your conditioners is the preservative system that I use phenoxy ethanol. It's fine for preserving stuff that you're gonna use on your hair or on your body, but you do, wouldn't wanna put it on anything that you're gonna use around your mouth. So it's, it's considered toxic if you're using it in, in products that are going to go on the, on the lips. But it's okay everywhere else. Wow. So it's just like picking apart things like that. Like, okay, well, I can use it for this, but I, I have to use another preservative system for that. So then I'm like, okay, then you have to pay attention to the pH of the product. Because some products only work from like pH 3 to 7.5. And then things like shampoo, they usually have a higher pH level, like a 15, oh, not a 15, it only goes up to like 14, <laughs> but like they usually have a pH level right, of like 10 or 11 and microbes don't grow at that pH at all. So sometimes like soaps or like, you know, liquid soaps won't have a pH, won't have a preservative in it at all. So all of that has to be taken into consideration. And then now you have to get into like, um, something to stabilize your pH or, or lower it, like citric acid, or take it up, make it more basic, like sodium hydroxide, or just like all of that. And then now the preservative will work because it's, you've got it to the right pH. Are you enjoying this feature? If so, leave us a comment down below and let us know what are certain ingredients that you look for in your natural hair care products to enhance your curls. Let us know in the comment section below. You've gotten your ingredients together, you figured out what products you're gonna make, and I know you make several products from deodorants to body butters to actually natural hair care products. What is your progress currently in putting your product in the marketplace? It's been very challenging because I'm a new entrepreneur, so I have to get used to knowing what my monthly expenses are gonna be. I have to become more organized, um, considering the fact that I'm no longer just making butters for my sisters. Um, so it's really been stretching me to grow. It's been stretching me to grow as far as being more organized. And then with me being a chemist, I worked as a chemist for 10 years. So I don't necessarily have to measure things out in order to know how much I put it in there. So like I can eyeball a tablespoon or I can eyeball how much a cup would be. 
But when you're formulating products and you're getting them to customers and you're packaging them, uh, customers expect consistency. So the only way to have a consistent product is if I weigh everything out and then write down exactly what I'm doing. And that's not really something that I'm used to doing. So it's something that I've had to uh, grow into doing just so that I can deliver a consistent product. If it's, you know, as far as thickness, as far as, you know, it, it not being lumpy or just knowing that, okay, if I make this much, if I put this much mango butter, cocoa butter, shea butter, and this amount of oils and fragrance in it, then I know that I can get six jars out of this one batch. So it's, you really have to uh, get everything down to a science and then um, keeping up with how many labels I need to order or just kind of guesstimated, you know, how much business am I going to have from month to month? Because, you know, everybody that's an entrepreneur, you know that your business goes like that. It's, it's never just like that. It always, okay, you had a good month last month, but then next month you might make $30. But then the next month you might make $2,000. So it's all just trying to figure out, okay, well, how much, how many labels do I need to order? How many uh, pounds of shea butter do I need to order? And, you know, how much time do I need to spend marketing? How much time am I going to have to spend at the post office? So all of that has to be taken into consideration. And because it's just me, it can be kind of overwhelming sometimes. So it's definitely uh, the progression of what's going on. One learning experience that I had during my progress was working with those different preservative systems. I really did not want to use a commercial grade preservative, but because I'm selling water-based products and um, products with things like aloe vera in it, some of my products have um, organic honey in it, I have to use a commercial grade preservative system. But before I got to that level of my understanding, I was selling products with, with just antioxidants in it, which slows down uh, the product's uh, oils going rancid, but it doesn't preserve the product. So I got, a, I got a, a text message from one of my customers and it was a picture mail and the entire product had molded. Like it was just completely molded at the top. And I'm talking about like the spider web looking uh, cotton ball, greenish type thing going on. And I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed that she had gotten that product. But luckily it was somebody I went to high school with. So she thought it was funny. I'm glad she thought it was funny because I was so embarrassed and that could have went great worse. So that's why um, anytime I see people talking about preservatives or they're asking, you know, do I have a, do you, do you use natural preservatives? Uh, I tried that and it didn't go out, it didn't go too well. So that taught me that you have to use those uh, commercial grade preservatives and it, but it's only at like, oh, 0.5 to 1 percentage of the entire formulation. So that was a big learning curve that I'm glad I experienced with somebody that I had known for 20 years because that could have got that could have went way worse. All right, so that was basically the progress of how I started formulating my own products from scratch right in my kitchen. After I figured out which preservative systems work great and how to uh, write down everything that I was doing so that I can uh, produce consistency in my batches, then that is when we moved into the production phase of Elaine's Naturals. And it didn't quite start right away because initially I just started word of mouth, just talking about it 
on my social media pages. I would post pictures of my hair. And then, you know, people could see how it worked in my hair. And they would be like, your hair is so shiny. Your hair is so moisturized. Oh my God, what are you using? And then that's it, it's Elaine's natural. So everybody at first, they thought I was using store-bought products, but I was using my own brand. So I was like, oh my God, I have a brand and people are interested in it. So then I started having other people try it out. Uh, they would send me before and after pictures and they were satisfied with how it worked. So then I also, part of the production was finding people with a different hair texture than what I had and then seeing how the products worked on their hair as well. That was a big part of the production is, okay, I can make products that fit my hair texture, but can I make it to, uh, to where they would work in other hair textures? So I had to diversify my production and my ingredients, which required more research. But once I got all of that settled, then I was able to market to different types of people and even uh, it, some of the stuff, it even works pretty good on the beards as well. So I had a couple of gentlemen who was purchasing products from me just so they could put it on their beards. So the, once I found out that the products were stretching across a broader spectrum besides just myself and my sisters, then that's when I got a website. As a new entrepreneur, we don't have a lot of money to spend $5,000 on like this big a professional website with scrolling uh, pages and all this other stuff. So I needed to find out a cost-effective website that would still generate income for me because up until that point, I would post something on social media and then I would have somebody cash at me or zail me. And then, you know, it, it doesn't look as professional to some people if you're asking them for a cash out because the first thing some people think is scam. So they want to be able to go to a website that looks professional, that looks nice, and then that they could uh, read about your products and see before and after pictures. So all of that had to be taken into consideration. I had to get a professional page on uh, Facebook. I got an IG page. I got a YouTube page. So now I'm running three social media channels in addition to the production of the actual products. So it can be pretty overwhelming at times, but when I see people sending me their before and after pictures, especially when they finally find like the perfect hair product that keeps their five-year-old's hair moisturized and it's not frizzy, then that pretty much makes it all worth it. But one of my biggest challenges that I've been facing lately is finding uh, the proper vendor that can you know satisfy the needs of elaine's naturals so um I, I had these beautiful like blue jars that i would um, make my body butters in but i went on the website to order some more and they said they was not gonna be back in stock until march you hear me march so i was like oh my god now this is where entrepreneurship really kicks in because as entrepreneurs, we are what? We're problem solvers. So I just had to just switch my packaging. I had to switch my packaging and buy what's, what was available. But the reason why I wanted those blue jars, I switched from blue to amber because that's what they had in stock. But um, just a word for anybody that's looking into launching their own products, you really do want to put your butters and your oils in a dark container just to just to keep sunlight from penetrating that container so that's why i was going with the blue jars for my, my body butters and then i hit the dark amber jars for my hair butter and that's just to kind of preserve the product the jar can act as a preservative as well by keeping the sunlight from penetrating it and speeding up the uh oxidation levels of the oils and some of the other ingredients in there that may be sensitive to light or just cause them to go rancid faster. So everything has to be thought about with uh, cleanliness and keeping um, in mind of how to protect that product to where your customers are getting a nice uh, bacteria-free product each and every time they order from you. And I already knew a lot about my friend over here, Elaine, but this was amazing just to sit and talk to you more and take a deeper dive 
and how you, because I've seen you on social media and I've seen this product live. I've seen how it works. I've even used, especially those body butters. And my husband is all, always pulling some type of jar from the dresser. You know, I'm like, ooh, what is this? He's like, oh, that's another one of Elaine's products. <laughs> I mean, he has all these little jars all over the place, you know? So he doesn't have hair, but a lot of times he, he uses it on his beard also. Mm -hmm. But I just want to say thank you, and I love your body butter. So I think that's my, mainly the one of the only products that I've. Oh, I've used the deodorant too, and the, the deodorant is really mild, has natural, nice, um, mild fragrance. So I want to just say thank you for um, coming to our channel, the Salon Chat, to just talk to us a little bit about your process, your progress, and the production of Elaine's Naturals. So what would you leave the listening audience with, Elaine? Well, first and foremost, it just would not be right if I didn't thank you for even having me on, over on your channel uh, to share my story with you on the salon chat. I would love to return the favor with you and have you over on Elaine's Naturals. Yes. So you guys look for her over on Elaine's Naturals as well. But that is my story, Ms. Sharon. That is uh, my story of Elaine's Naturals, of how I went from process to progress to production, and how I started formulating or using my background in chemistry and organic chemistry at that. That's the only way I'm able to pronounce all of those chemicals and those ingredients is because we learned that in organic chemistry. But that that's really it that's all that went into it and thank you for having me and that was my that was my story thank you so until next time take care and peace and hair grease <laughs> <laughs> i hope that you enjoy this comparison of our legacy and our living legacy and how they got started in owning their own natural hair care products so remember, you are the creator of your reality. So go and create something great. And until next time, peace.